Hi, I'm just going to show you a quick way of sharpening your carbide tip saw blades. In this particular case, I've got a 12 inch diameter chop saw blade on here. And if you'll notice, the tooth pattern on this thing is consistent all the way around, as is the gullet pattern. Okay. Uh, what's important when you're doing this? Oops is you want to leave a consistent amount of carbide behind here. It's not so much how much you're taking off, it's what you're leaving behind. So today, I'm just going to be grinding... Oh, okay, my, oop, there we go. Get in the screen here, in the frame. I'm just going to be grinding this face here. I'm not going to bother grinding right here. I'm not going to be grinding this outside, right? Which I can. I just got to rotate the grinder so that the blade here is sitting this way, right? And with this jig, it's pretty easy to just turn the grinder 90 degrees. When you set yours up, it's really important to make sure that this the face of your grinding disc is 90 degrees to your table that way it's 90 degrees this face here this this vertical face on here is always 90 degrees on these blades the hook angle which is this angle this way that may vary so when you're setting your grinder up you make sure that you're running parallel to the hook angle. Okay. Um, I'm simply using, you know, I've got a base piece of plywood that's approximately 16 inches by about 30 inches, and then I've got this smaller piece of plywood sitting on here, like so. This is a fairly hard wearing face. Um, you can use whatever. It doesn't have to be fancy. I've seen guys use all kinds of bearings, you know, like drawer slides and stuff like that. You don't need to. Um, so long as you've got two parallel faces here and here, these are oak, and uh, the piece that fits in between here, you don't want to have any play, but you want to have enough that you can pull this thing back and forth easily like so. Don't need a ton of travel, basically just enough to clear the tooth. I'm using a bronze key as my indexer, meaning when I position this thing in, it determines how much rotation I've got and the depth. The depth isn't that critical, it's more about how much I'm rotating each new tooth into the face of the cutting disc. That's important. I want to have a very consistent amount of carbide on each tooth left behind. Um, a lot of guys freehand it. Ultimately, does it make that much of a difference? It does a bit because you end up having a slightly rougher cut. We're not talking 20 or 30 thou difference. We're talking fractions of a thou that we're taking off. This is a 4 inch diameter solid rim or continuous rim uh, diamond coated disc. You can buy these things for a few dollars. I buy them for about three dollars or so Canadian delivered to my door. And I've just made a, you know, I, I made these simple cutouts with a jigsaw and that firmly holds the grinder. You know, it, it doesn't move and yet it's not impeding uh, the grinder in any way. And uh, I've got a little toggle here, a pivot toggle that engages the paddle switch. Uh, I'm using a piece of 5.8 cold rolled bar as my pivot point. If you don't have access to a piece of 5.8, 5.8 is a nice number because these 12 inch blades, they've actually got a 1 inch diameter hole, but they uh, most chop saws are actually on a, a 5 8 diameter arbor, so they give you a, 
a little uh, washer to fit, so it's perfect. And your 10 inch blades that are most common on tail saws are also a 5 8 arbor, so really handy. And you know, you can see it, it's snug, so there's, there's no play, there's zero play, there's no play in this whole thing, and yet I can move this back and forth quite freely, okay? And uh, away we go. I'm going to mark my starting point because there's, I don't know, 80 teeth on here, 100 teeth, whatever it is. And that's it, okay? So, unplugged it. <laughs>